Okay, uh, let's start. Well, first, welcome to the Auto GIS part of, of the Auto GIS course. So now we, what we are going to do uh, is basically to start using the skills that we learned from the GeoPython part uh, of the course and use them to do some GIS things. Uh, and, 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 and see how we can create, for example, maps uh, using pure Python. Uh, first of all, uh, the course site, so it's autogis.github.io, uh, so that's a short link to the materials. Uh, this year uh, we will have similar pages uh, as with the GeoPython part, so, well, the materials will be distributed each week uh, in here. We will start by lesson one uh, today. Uh, also, otherwise, the kind of environment is more or less similar. So we will basically have the Jupyter Lab and the cloud computing environment so that you can start uh, repeating the lesson materials or doing the exercises using that environment. Um, what else? Then we have uh, Slack uh, that we are going to use for, uh, well, questions and answers. So this uh, yesterday, or was it yesterday, uh, Walkoff created channels for us. So now we have set separate channels for uh, quantitative geology uh, students and for us. So when you go to Slack and basically click on the general uh, channel here, you should see these links. So whenever you click this link, it should ask, do you want to join to that channel? So go through and, and click on each one of those channels uh, or these links in here and join to those ones. So then you can again ask questions uh, on each week for the dedicated channel uh, for those. So that's maybe one practical thing. Um, what we will do uh, during this uh, course is that we will first, uh, there are again seven, week, uh, seven lessons uh, until, so the last one will be on 10th of December. Um, and the first one today. So we have different topics on, on each week and then again exercises that you can practice uh, those things that we have went through uh, each week. We will start by just uh, introducing you what, what, how do you actually represent uh, spatial objects or geometric objects in Python uh, using this uh, shapely module that is kind of underlying uh, in, in many of the packages that we can use in Python to do GIS things. Then next week we will uh, already start using this kind of pandas-like environment or framework called GeoPandas. Uh, so it works in a similar manner as pandas, but it can handle geometric uh, data and it has a lot of different capabilities. Uh, to do different things related to GIS. Then on the third week, we will learn how to do geocoding. So if you have a list of addresses, how can you actually geocode so that you can put those addresses on a map and vice versa. So that's pretty uh, common uh, thing that you need to do uh, in, in whenever working with spatial data. Uh, then we will learn how to make some basic spatial queries such as point and bullet and and these kind of things. Uh, then we will go to geometric operations, some overlay analysis. Uh, we will learn how to do re reclassifications. Uh, this is typical whenever you are doing a map and basically, well, if you have used ArcGIS or Quantum GIS, so typically you want to classify your values into certain classes. So we will see how we can do that in Python. Then on the fifth lesson, we will uh, dedicate to visualization. So we will show you, well, you will do maps every, every week. Well, not this week, but 
uh, starting from next week. So you will kind of learn and, and get to used to how to create some simple maps throughout the course. But we will also focus on how to create interactive maps that you can share on the internet and you can actually do those kind of things. So by the end of this course, you should be able to kind of, well, impress your friends to by creating some cool, cool interactive stuff and, and actually sharing those things. Then on the sixth week, we will do some network analysis uh, and, and routing, which is quite a lot used in transport modeling. Uh, we have made a um, decision not to include raster stuff um, in, the, in the course. We had something a couple of years ago and I can actually put the link here if you're interested in those things. And I have some extra materials for raster processing as well uh, that is developed for one other kind of intensive course that I have uh, given at CSC. So if you're interested in those things, I can basically give you a link to those. Maybe even put that in here in the materials. Um, yeah, so we will mostly work with vector data uh, in this during this course. And on the last uh, class seven, we will kind of take a short introduction how you can use Python with quantum GIS. Uh, it's a bit different world uh, kind of bundling Python in, in quantum GIS. Uh, it's a bit kind of similar that ArcGIS has a kind of own language and how you actually uh, use the functionalities of quantum GIS or ArcGIS. So it's not uh, really kind of the, uh, one of the kind of, uh, objectives of this, of this course. It's again a bit different world but we want to introduce you a bit like how do they how do they work because quantum GIS is of course uh, very uh, much used software for GIS nowadays. We have also materials for ArcGIS using ArcGIS model from two years ago as well if you're interested I, I can also maybe I put those on Slack so you can take a look of those. Um, yeah is there anything you would like to ask about the contents or the practicalities before moving on? Um, there is some basic uh, information. Well, actually, grading. That's a good generic topic that we still need to do. So we will kind of continue uh, similar procedures as before. So we will have weekly exercises. They are uh, given points up to 20 points typically, and those will be graded uh, by assistants. And by the way, it's now who, who are the ones teaching you is me, Wokko, and then Oyelovo. So the three of us uh, are here to help you. And, and the practical sessions are nowadays on the same time on Thursdays from 12 to 4 so and that's the only time so now because we divided the courses into two so Dave as the geology students and I have the geographer so now we only have one dedicated time of course you can go during the Friday session as well but probably you won't get any kind of uh, help or dedicated help from Dave's assistants because they don't well they don't know what we are doing so that's the, the basic idea yes um, and then probably nowadays when as we have the practical sessions on Thursdays uh, so let's do so that you have time until Wednesday the next week to actually uh, give uh, and return the exercises because there is basically if you would start the exercises during the practical sessions on Thursdays you would basically have only Friday as one uh, full day before the next uh, lecture on Monday already so let's do so that you have basically full week time to actually do that yes um, there's also 
yeah, I'm, I'm still about the grading. So, uh, so we have the exercises and then we have a final broader programming as assignment that you will do. Uh, so the idea of the final assignment is that uh, I basically give you a longer uh, description of what your program should do and then without giving any kind of now we have had quite uh, accurate well not accurate but quite descriptive things what you should do in the exercises so the final assignment is such that you need to kind of use the things that you have learned and try to apply them yourself of course we uh, we can assist you if you are really kind of uh, struck uh, or stuck and, and don't know where to start but the idea is that that kind of uh, is the place or the moment where you need to show me and us what you have learned and that is half of the was it so um, no it's not mentioned here but but at least the previous years uh, basically the final assignment has been 50% of the final grade of the whole course and then the exercises has been 50 but now I have been thinking of should I actually put a bit more emphasis on the exercises that you do during the during the course so it might be 60 40 so 60 for the exercises and 40 for the final assignment but I will well I will still think about that but that might be how we do it this year Good. Uh, then there is uh, instructions also how to install Python and do GIS on your own computer. How many of you have done uh, the programming exercises on your own computer? Okay, a few. Uh, so there is uh, installation instructions here, but don't do these yet because I need to update them. These are a bit obsolete as they are from last year. Uh, so, and there are some new packages that I, I still want to update on this one. Uh, so I will update this uh, page today, so then you can uh, do the installations. Uh, did you use well, who, the ones who installed, so did you use the Anaconda and the Conda uh, package, dis distribution package? Yes. Yeah, so you did, did, did you? No. no I yeah. So, because that makes life much, much easier, uh, especially now when we are heading to using uh, GIS packages, I will quick, uh, soon show you uh, what kind of packages are available, but there are many of them and there are a lot of dependencies between packages and a lot of actually third party kind of softwares that are not pure Python. So Conda and Anaconda keeps these dependencies much more. Uh, they, they kind of take care of many of the things so that the packages actually work well together. So it's, it's quite crucial to use, use Anaconda. Um, if you have troubles in installing those, just give me a message in Slack so we can take a look. This year we decided to, so I recommend you to use uh, the cloud, compu compu cloud computing environment because there everything is ready, all the packages are working, they have been tested and so on, so you can just focus on learning how to use them. Uh, last year we emphasized of actually people to install stuff on their own computers and it was okay during the first period when the second period came the first two weeks i was really busy figuring out everyone's computer because there was some differences in the computers or the operating systems and some things didn't work and then yeah it was a mess so <laughs> to this week uh, kind of using the dedicated system uh, makes these things a bit easier but of course when continuing after the course that I hope you do. Uh, it's best that you actually install the Python environment on your own computer. Good, um, there are some resources. So some additional books uh, that uh, might be useful if you're interested in 
using Python for uh, GIS. So there is this law edge learning geospatial analysis with Python. Uh, so that's one uh, book that might be interesting. And um, Python, Python for geospatial development. So uh, they have a bit different uh, content. So this is for, for example, if you're really developing GIS applications and software. So this might be something to take a look at. There is also a book for ArcGIS. Well, we are not focusing on using ArcGIS, but if you're interested, that might be uh, a book uh, that you can take a look at. It's available from the library, so you can borrow it. But um, as said, we are not focusing on using these uh, GIS softwares, but we are focusing on how to actually program uh, with Python and using pure Python packages for GIS. Good. Um, 